so Rohit is our interview expert. What is your, what did you say it was? It was um, acceptance rate? Oh, no. <laughs> like, you yeah. said that, like, no, I don't four, think that like, like four out of five people that you've prepped have gotten into uh, med school? I mean, like, I think that's more speaking to them. I just kind of give them, like, a little bit of advice and they just tend to already be good candidates. And <laughs> so what is your interview tips? I mean, like, I think, like, as Megan was saying, I think the most important thing, if you're someone who's applying to med school or has interviews, I always tell everybody, you have to, like, be yourself. Uh -huh. And, um... And the thing with the interview prepping, it's more about being a polished version of yourself. So spending a lot of time thinking about how you speak and the random ums or likes that you use in your speech and trying really? to get rid of them. I'm yeah. so bad with likes and <laughs> blinking. And like, yeah. like, like, like. <laughs> exactly. So you can have to work to get those out. <laughs> and then the other thing is just kind of like thinking about like the experiences that have molded you and kind of shaped yeah. your decision to wanting to pursue a career in medicine have to kind of be present. So a lot of the time is just kind of helping people figure out those experiences and how to word them in a way that's succinct and concise and can really like help uh, convey the emotion and the depth that you want to um, and why the, show the interviewer. And so it's kind of like the idea is like you have a story, but you know you have to think about the way that you present it because you have a very little mi limited amount of time to uh -huh. tell, show the interviewer that these are all the reasons why you should be um, able to get into med school uh, in a way that you connect with them, and that and takes a bit of prep. Why is it that it's important for them to like? see all of the experiences that have brought or like understand who you are and why you chose this profession is it because they want to make sure that you're like um authentic or like that you don't have any other motives other than i mean like you're like, not motivated for like money you're, i like, mean realistically like you know if you're gonna be honest like there's for sure people like that i know in medicine that might be motivated for the wrong reasons but i think it's just more like when you're an interviewer you want to be able to understand like why this person wants to pursue this career because mm -hmm. it's not something that is an easy path like i think everyone thinks that getting into med school is hard and for sure it is but once you get into medical school it's like so much of a grind it's so much perseverance and sometimes you kind of lose like the vision that you had for yourself when you mm -hmm. were like gunning to get into medical school that you need to be able to almost know for yourself why that you why is it that I wanted to be a doctor because it's for sure times that like I'm sure Megan and I mm -hmm. can relate where we're just so frustrated being like why did I put myself through this like what is the goal and then you remember like you know these were the reasons that like made me want to become like a doctor and I think that like if you can sit down and really come up with a robust reason, you're also just setting yourself up for success through medical school and as a physician because those are the things that are always going to get you through and those are the things that are going to make the hard days when you're working in the hospital and seeing patients and things are not going your way more manageable for like your mental state and emotional state as well. Do you agree? I do. I think like I would I would say like I think one of the things that I've been quoted as saying is that, you know, once you get into medical school and this is something because Rohit came the year after me. Yeah. Was was I said, you know what, you're gonna realize that it's it's a really a marathon, it's not a sprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so we kind of I think in 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 pre-med we were like, oh, you know, you have to get into medical school, like you get into medical school and then you realize what was the rush to get here? Like yeah. anything that you do, what I've come to realize and when people ask me this question is Anything that you do before medical school is ultimately going to make you a better medical student and make you a better doctor. Like, mm -hmm. I think that being a person outside of medicine is one of the most important things that you mm -hmm. can bring to it. And I think, like, this is also a piece that I would put in a plug for kind of resilience, uh, resiliency in medical school. And I think this is also why <clears throat> in medical school interviews, they want to make sure that you're a person outside of just kind of your kind of science-y research. Yeah, exactly. You have to have things outside of medicine and I think that having those things, having hobbies, being a person makes you a better doctor and makes you more relatable to patients as well. And ultimately, like, there's always gonna be stress in medicine. Like, medicine is not necessarily an easy profession. Mm -hmm. I think it's a rewarding one, but I think having that reserve um, is really important as a medical student, as a resident, and as a doctor. Yeah. It's actually quite interesting, like in, in, I don't know, I find that like in North America, we're so like on schedule, like we're like, you do your bachelor in four years, yeah. and then you get into medical mm -hmm. school, or you can get into medical school after a third year, like, yeah. and then you go in, and then you do your residency, and then you're a doctor, and then your life starts. Exactly. And it's like, I don't know, after living in, 
like Switzerland, like things are so much slower. Like people take their sweet time out, yeah. to do everything. And it's great. I like it better. Well, I think there's this whole piece about delayed gratification. And a lot of people in, in professions or in medical school, like I think this can be um, related to many different fields, mm -hmm. but it's all about, you know, putting in the work now, putting in the grind and, and receiving the gratification later. But I don't think that's a great way to live. It's kind of, no. you know, you need to take that kind of that quote about, you know, it's the journey, it's not the destination. Yeah. Um, and so I think kind of living in the moment is really important and learning to do that as a medical student can be sometimes challenging because a lot of the way that medicine works is it is about delayed gratification. It's about like putting in your time now and then you're going to be the staff later. You know what I yeah. mean? Like you work hard, you do the call, you do all this stuff, and then and then you'll have that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's sometimes hard to kind of keep both perspectives in mind. Yeah, so. and, and you know what, like, I guess in some ways we all find, maybe some of us do, but the way that I, at least I cope with it is you kind of try to find the things that, like, center you outside of medicine, that, like, your world doesn't just tip into this uh, sphere. So for me, like, you know, I write and I read and I also do, like, yoga, and these are all the things that, like, I, like, have built into, like, my every day. So it's like if I'm going to medical school or if I'm going to the hospital for my clerkship, like, every single day, then I should have activities either before or after that that are part of my every day that are not related to medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think that that helps. But yeah, anyways, getting back to the whole interview <laughs> part of, part the of reason, it. The reason you're invited here. Reason, yeah, it's like, get out of this. Yeah, I know. Um, essentially, the point is that you want to be able, when people interview, they want to be able to see a person. And, and they want to be able to see that they are authentic and they're genuine and what really makes them tick. And the more that the interviewer is able to feel connected to that person, the more they feel they can get a sense of who they are and the type of physician they'll be. Yeah. And that's the reason why, like, when you interview, you don't want to give what you think is the right answer or what you yeah. think is a constructed answer. You want to be yourself. You just have to be a bit more of your polished self so that, you know, you're speaking well, you're not stumbling over your words, and you're able to kind of express your ideas as clearly as possible. And I think that's what requires the prep. But it's not so much the prep being like, what are my strengths? And you're like, oh, these are the strengths that probably look good for a physician. It's like, no, what are your actual strengths? And now phrase them with maybe a personal example yeah. and how it might relate to like medicine, yeah. maybe, but it's you, it has to be you. And I think that a lot of people don't see that. And a lot of the times when people come to me for like interview prep or interview advice and let's say they hadn't gotten in the years before, um, the biggest thing that I always see is that they just thought that they had to give these contrived answers that they thought fit what the school wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And when I say no, just be yourself. Like if they're like, oh, should I tell a story about like how I completely failed and messed up and it like just like sank, like my idea sank or like this project like just got completely like screwed up. Um, do you think they'll like that? And I was like, what did you learn from it? And they're like, oh, like I learned like this, this, this. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you tell them this? Because this shows that you're human. This shows that you, like everybody in medicine, every all of us who are in medical school, we make mistakes, but we're able to grow from them. And that's just one example. Mm -hmm. And and people don't realize that being vulnerable and being yourself and being able to show that part of yourself is all anybody wants to see in an interview. And like... In, in medicine. I yeah. think that's really good advice for anyone looking to get into <laughs> it's my secret. It's my secret advice now available on YouTube <laughs> for $19.99. <laughs> <Okay. laughs>